degree of um, P of X like we want, right? Let's think about, I think it'd be good to think about it in the, most, in the case where, okay, so if we have a two, if we have a degree two polynomial, would, that's the only, that's the, uh, if you could find a case where the degree of R of X was greater than P, which, do you get what I'm saying? Uh, or that? Oh, there's something else I have forgotten. How do we know that the T is not empty? T is not empty? Uh-huh. How about this? F of X minus... We can look at F of X minus P of X, right? That's a polynomial. It's not the zero polynomial. Remember the degree of f is larger than the degree of p by my assumption. And so that means that the degree of this, um, well, the degree of this is actually equal to the degree of f, right? Because the degree of f is larger by assumption, which means that the leading coefficient of f wins. If you have like, yeah. Extra, yeah. okay, <laughs> uh, okay, good. Um, so, okay. you're fine. Uh, so definitely that's not empty. Like, this S is a non-empty subset, right? Non-empty, yeah. Because no matter what, you'd have to multiply by an X. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm trying to... I don't know. I'm trying to see if there's a proof. Like my my intuition is that the degree of R of X should be less than the degree of you know P of X because you're canceling out like the part of F that's multiples of P by multiplying by Q. So like you're taking into account of all of that. That's not a proof, right? <laughs> but the, this sort of thing is usually proved by contradiction, like suppose otherwise, and then you try to, you know... Oh, we could be equal to. So like, there's, I'm thinking about the reals instead of an algebra, but it could, R of X could be equal to P of X. Um, let's say you have F of X equal to X to the fourth plus X to the third. Factor that. And we, we're dividing by what? Um, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Plus x. I should add a plus x to that. And what are we dividing by? Um, P of x equals what? What's our divisor? Uh, so you can get rid of that. You can factor that by uh, taking out an x. What are you trying to divide by? Essentially, I'm trying to say that q of x and p of x plus r of x or p and r of x are the same degree. I think you can do this. Um, um, can I do this? Three, two, one. Is that divisible? Three, two, one. Make okay. sure I was getting this. Third. 
plus x to the second plus 1. And this. This is what I was trying to do, so I'm going to change this a little bit. is less than, it's larger than the degree of P. Okay, so if we go back to this one then. That's the same degree? Oh, yes. Phooey. I mean, assumption that um, the degree of f is less than the degree of, uh, it's larger than the degree of p is, is mostly for the convenience of my thinking. I don't think it's a necessary assumption of the algorithm. Um, so what are you trying to, what are you, what's your question? Oh, oh, my question at the moment is to try to understand, um, okay, so like, you know, non-empty subset of integers, mm -hmm. great. Um, so while we'll our we'll in principle there exists a minimum, mm -hmm. or it's zero, if it's zero then we're done. If it's not zero there must be a polynomial of least degree in here, call it r of x, right? And we know the degree of r of x is r naught, right? Which is the minimum degree possible for such polynomials. The question then is, why is it the case that the degree of r of x must be not more than the degree why can't it, why does it have to be less than the degree of P? So there must be a contradiction if we assume otherwise. Um, okay, so we have, um, I'm gonna, no, 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 okay. you can erase this part. So, I'm gonna, this has to have some N, right? Uh -huh. And so we know that P is, um, let's say x to the, uh, it's got a leading term too, which is like x to the P. <laughs> there you go. So this is less than this by and definition. P, yeah, P, and by assumption, right? P yeah. is less than n. Yeah. Okay, so. That means, but. This is, has a Q in which um, that's true. So no matter what, um, uh, it can't be greater than Q because if you add Rx on both sides, it gives you zero. Make sense? So, P is less, and then Q has to be less too, just because they're multiplied. And so, see, um, 
Well, yeah, yeah. Is equal to r, right? So you take any n and find factors of it. Oh, yeah. Any n, if you find factors of it, if you subtract it by its factor, by any any of its factors, you're gonna get a number less than its factors. Mm -hmm. Therefore, R never be greater than there. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't prove that though. So, these are factors. Zero. I think I think you got the right idea. Let me try to complicate what you're saying a little bit. Okay. So f of x is polynomial, right? Mm -hmm. So it's something like I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna assume without loss of generality that uh, for the sake of making things slightly easier. Oh, I got it. I think I got it. This for this to be greater than p, the lowest p can be one, but if p is one. Uh, f the only factor that I can have, q, has to be equal to n. Therefore, r is always r can never be greater than p. And you you can go up any set of factors, and it can never. So p is one. This is a factor of n. What's the only factor of n that's multiplied by one? That implies q is n. Q is equal to n. Therefore, r is zero. Uh -huh. And every time you go up, doesn't matter how much down q goes, that has to be a factor, so like, I don't know if I can prove this, but I, like, it, yeah, I mean, you're going up in step, like, p yeah. steps, so you can't, um, if you're, so, I don't know, like, 12 would be 3, 4, mm -hmm. 6, 1, right, I think that's it, 12, 6, 2, um, so to go up to the next one, two. Yeah. Um, you can multiply by any of these. Um, ooh, wait. No, but you can multiply by this, and I give you six when you are equal six. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. Or does do these have to match? Do, see, but that's only if. Hmm. See, um, but we're gonna. I think we're gonna have to get into more detail here. It's like f of x is a polynomial, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll make it easy in the sense that I'm going to assume that the top term in it is monic. I'll, I'll, I'll let f of x and, and p of x be monic here, meaning that f of x is x to the n plus stuff. Okay. You know, so plus a n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, a2, uh, x squared. I'm writing too much, a1, x plus a0. All right, monic, f of x. And also p, p of x is also monic. I'm going to say it's x to the p, right? Mm -hmm. Plus uh, b p minus one x to the p minus one b one x plus b nine. And then, and then the key then is how are those degrees in terms related to q q bar of x, right? Mm -hmm. So let's let q bar of x be, um, and I, I won't, well, let's see here. I think, can I justly assume that q of x is monic as well? I think I can. So x to the q plus, um, I use c this time, I see uh, c q minus 1, x to the q minus 1. C1x plus C0, right? Mm -hmm. So put that all together, look at like, what you're dealing with here. You've got yourself a, um, R of x is what? F of x minus yeah. Q bar of x, P of x. C 
So that is x to the n um, n minus 1, x to the n minus 1. I don't know if I were really looking at degrees here. Exactly. So, um, like, I'm, I'm getting there. Okay. I mean, I agree. It's, it's not degree. A, a degree. I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. Uh, minus q, q bar. There's no joke there. Why are you laughing? Uh, what are you laughing? Um, x to the q plus and so forth and so on. This term is right. Times px, which was x to the p, right? So, if the degree, so what has to be happening, like you said, is, like there has to be like massive cancellation between this f of x and this term, right? Mm -hmm. all, all the terms up to order P of X has to be gone. Um, so let's see here. Suppose otherwise, what would that mean? Right. If 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 not, then this would be like suppose towards a contradiction. This was what like suppose R is greater than P. Yeah. Suppose that suppose for a second that the degree of R of X is is P or larger, right? Mm -hmm. um, then that means that there's like a well because of the structure here it has to be monic right so x to the x to the r d <laughs> yeah um, there's or d yeah d and minus one, one. Um, where r d is what greater than p, which is, of course is equal to p, and p is greater than what was at uh, our current nomenclature. p is greater than 1? That's all we're assuming is it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. means that you can write this, oh, I'll see, that means you can write this as like x to the rd minus, um, whatever that is, what, minus p, <laughs> times x to the power p, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. But, I guess you get the x to the power then. Oh, well, this well, yes, but I, I guess what I'm trying to get at here is this is a a multiple of x to the power p, right? subtract this piece from yeah. it, that's again something that's in set T, which means the degree of that thing is in the set G, which means that the degree has to be less than oh, R not. I was thinking. But R not the minimum. So I was thinking actually. back, yeah, I was thinking back here because if, if we assume R is greater than P, if we rearrange this and add it, this should all equal n, right? Um, Plus r, but yeah. Oh, yeah. But... One sec. If r is greater than... Oh! I think that's what I was missing. If r is greater than p, that means this can never equal n. So if I go back to my, uh, this is, this is just me like trying to see. Uh, so if R is greater than P, we can take any two factors, right? So it's that are, that's less than 12, obviously. 
Um, so two and three, or no, let's, let's do two and four. All right, that's eight. We already have four, we're already using four. Two, this has to equal to n, which is 12. Um, so we already used four, we already used two. The only thing that's left is six and 12. Um, eight plus six is 14, I know we're 12. I think you can do that for any number. Because the only way this would work is if it was um, <sighs> if it was unequal. I think you can use that logic to find something too. Hmm. But it has to be anyway. The the proof has to be something like, you know, you construct the set, you pick the minimum, you pick a hmm. a representative um, q bar of x, which achieves the minimum r of x, r of x, the polynomial with least degree r of x. Mm -hmm. And then you can argue that if you clear out the higher order terms, then you're just left with the term of maximum degree, which in this case is x bar to the d, mm -hmm. then if that maximum degree has a degree larger than p, then you can pull out an x to the p, and as such you can subtract that term to the other side and get a new r prime of x of um, a smaller degree, I think. Let's see here. See, this would be, well, the, the uh, well, anyway, I, I found a contradiction here. I'm just having trouble expressing it again. But yeah. I think the, the lion's share of the logic is based on, like, looking at the leading terms and, like, trying to identify what is the leading term. So, yeah. so mm -hmm. see, the my question is, like, why do you even have to look at it? Why can't you just look at the leading, like, like, like look at the rest of it? Like, because we're only really caring about the top polynomial, or the top degree. Like, that's all where the information is. Like, the other stuff can... Um, well, yeah, I mean... The, like, I know you have to write it out for, like, but I'm saying, like... Well, I, I'm not sure that writing it out here really achieved anything either, yeah. I would agree with that. Um, no, I think I think I can prove this. I think I think given a Q, given a factorization of n, that you can choose any p value of p, or you can choose any r greater than p, like this factorization, and it'll never equal to the original factorization. And if that's not provable, then I'll come back. But I'm pretty sure that mm -hmm. there's something there. I think, um, I think if, if, so the question is, I don't think there's any, look, like, unless I'm missing something here, my, my strong feeling is that we haven't really used division no. of the coefficients in this discussion, so there should still be a factor theorem for polynomials over an algebra. Yeah. Um, twenty four. One. Two. Um, twelve. Now, uniqueness, like unique factorization, mm -hmm. that's that's a non starter. Like the formula we see on the chalkboard over there, yeah, is quite manifestly showing you, like, you don't have unique. No. Because we can adjust things by zero divisors. In fact, the larger question is, what is degree? You notice I never really defined degree, did I? 
What is the degree of a polynomial? I think about it geometrically. How do you think about the geometry of a polynomial in three hyperbolic numbers? Oof, that's a great number. <laughs> so what, like, what's the degree? Uh, I mean, so this is the question is, do we want to build, I think, so the temptation with degree is to assume that it's something that's defined for, um, I think degree is going to be tricky for degenerate polynomials. Like, if I look at the degree of 1 plus j, you know, times z, and I said, well, that, that's degree 1. I think I could say that. Mm -hmm. You know, or z squared. That's degree 1. That's not degree 1. I bet that z, z squared plus z, you know? I could say, ah, oh, that's, that's degree 2. Yeah. Right? And then you, you might be tempted, if you're not being careful, to think about, like, well, the degree of a constant times, if I have a constant times a polynomial, it should just be, right? Like, yeah. I mean, that's definitely true in our ordinary experience. You take six times a polynomial of order 15, it's still a polynomial order 15, right? But you see what happens here? When we put c equal to 1 minus j, then c f of z, if this is f of z, c f of z, this piece, Oof, degree zero. See that? Or yeah, degree, yeah. So I would like to say that the degree of C F of Z. Oh, that'd be one. That's uh, one. Yeah. So this right here, I'm not, not gonna, not gonna work if we're gonna work with possibly degenerate polynomials. Seems like we have to say C, but, we, that, but we're not factoring all the way out, are we now? Oh, I'm not even. I'm not even thinking about factoring just yet. I'm just thinking not about factoring. Really. Like, how can we say like why is one minus j a constant? Because it's. I mean, it's a number in H two. Yeah, I guess you could put yeah. Busy. Yeah. It, in the, the real numbers, if you had z, c equal to zero. Oh, I, I didn't mean to put c here either, by the way. That's, I'm just meant to say equal. Yeah. My bad. The, I mean, I mean, the argument still holds. Like, you know, if you have a real polynomial multiplied by zero, the degree is still zero. Mm -hmm. No, we never have a degree one. Well, no, yeah, you can have a degree one. Um, uh, c x squared plus one. Degree one. Work the same. Here, I mean x squared. Yeah. Plus d, yeah. That'd be degree one, two. Oh well, yeah, I don't have to have z here, I could put. Yeah, I mean whatever you want. One yeah, uh, you're right. Like wouldn't that work the same? Is zero, zero not a real number? I mean then then the resulting polynomial would be In this case, 1 minus j times f of z is what? Uh, da, 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 da. 1. Yeah, this is 1 minus j, right? Yeah. 1 minus j. Well, I multiply that times. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So that would be degree 0, I think. Yeah, the 0 is 1. Yeah. So, in a, so if I put a z here, it's degree 1, Yeah. right? If I put a 1 there, it's degree 0. So what can we say about the relation between C and that? We can say that this is not equal to, but it's generally less than or equal to. Yeah. So that's that's what we have to deal with. Um, and I think the same is true, like if we have, um, I want to say the degree of f of z times g of z. So in the world of fields, what's the, what's the degree of a product? It's the sum of the degrees, right? You take a third order times a fifth order, you get an eighth order. Mm -hmm. Here, you take a third order times a fifth order, uh, <laughs> stuff can happen. Yeah. 
So this is oh, that's good. at most it's eight. At most yeah, it's yeah, eight. most. Yeah. So it's less than or equal. So that that's the. See, this is this is the thing we're gonna have to. Shorten it up. We're gonna have to circle back. Yeah. And think about this. No. No, but that's interesting. In light of that, so like, I have assumed that they're monic. So I dodged this question because to see the degree of R and the degree of the other thing, I just looked at the leading terms, right? But um, if the leading terms come uh, packaged with zero divisors, then I think, well, anyway, I think we have to think about, let's see here, so, Quality, we get, we, we can we can lose degrees in the product as a thing, and I mean the lowest order case in this, of course, is that the degree of um, well, just the, like the constant multiple of f of z, right? It's at most the degree of the that's like the lowest case of this phenomenon is like if we take a constant multiple of a polynomial over the algebra, well, the degree of that constant multiple could be at most the degree of the original polynomial, but it could be less. If we were, in, if we had a degenerate polynomial, right? Yeah. Now, on the flip side of things, if we have a non-degenerate polynomial, meaning that the leading coefficient's a unit, I, I believe that non-degenerate polynomials, ones for which the leading coefficients are units, mm -hmm. There we get back to the usual song and dance of like addition and not less than or equal to. This this is this is the bad fruit of degeneracy. So getting back, getting finally get back to over here where we started all this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had this. We, this was in the context of the non-degenerate AODE section, right? So that means that AN is. Um, is a unit, which is to say that this polynomial here, you know, a n z to the n plus da dot plus a one z plus a dot. That's a uh, non-degenerate nth order polynomial in the algebra. Now, if we if we do have if we do have the division algorithm, it should be clear enough that the factor theorem follows quickly after that, right? Because if you had, you know, p of z is equal to z minus alpha times q of z plus some constant in the algebra r, then when you plug in alpha, you get back r. And if r is zero, that's the factorization. So like, once we're sure that the division algorithm, in some sense or another, works for polynomials or the algebra, then the logic of this theorem flows through. I'm running into a problem though. Uh-huh. Um, so, This doesn't work if your remainder. Well, I don't know. Because how does division work? Like, what are we saying? Is division. Now I'm thinking about this. Like, forget this. This that's provable. That these top coefficients or not coefficients. The, the highest degree of QP and uh -huh. that, yeah, this, yeah, this yeah this this holds. This is unequal to n. But what happens if par um, is a remainder of a polynomial? Um, like, let's say Q and P are, you know, two polynomials that Q 
kill like like so. Um, maybe Q and B Q is second order and P is third order. Or I, I'm thinking F is more seventh than, order or something. You know, first uh, order. Yeah, you know, if if it was seventh order and Q and P are two polynomials where the f like the x to the fifth term is canceled is killed. Um, this can be 7, this can be 1, this can have an x to the 5th term, and the remainder will be x to the 5th. Unless I'm thinking of, I don't know, I might be thinking of long division incorrectly. No, you couldn't do that. I know this holds, I know this holds for the leading degree, like I'm like certain this holds for the leading degree and I'm pretty sure someone has written this somewhere, I just have to find it. But my question is, if this remainder, if every poly, like, if every factor of polynomials, like if you can, like, If you have an nth degree polynomial, if a factorization exists where you have a remainder, um, like x to the r plus any real number, um, where So in this case, like if, if it's 12, this can be some x to the fourth, da 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 da, da. and then some x to the third, and somehow it kills the, um, it kills the x to the fifth turn mm -hmm. in some way or another. Because, you know, we I mean, because oh, it's, wait, it's not wait. just x cubed, it's x cubed plus the x. Yeah. It's x to the fourth times x gives you that x to the fifth term. Yeah, and that's your remainder. But now I'm thinking, I don't, I don't know if that's quite, this, I don't know, I don't know if this is, so like, uh, for like, x to the third minus one, x second plus one, like would anything get killed? So we have, um, I'm just X is 60. Uh, see, I don't, I don't think so. Because if these two, if these two leading coefficients are different, you're not going to get a term that kills itself. I'm like, oh, but what if you have two X third terms? Oh, okay, yeah. Like if you have a yeah, like a plus x squared minus 1, so you get x to the 5th plus x to the 4th um, minus x squared, um, and then you get, oh, you, then you get x plus x to the 3rd plus x squared minus 1, like these two kill each other. And so you get x to the fifth plus x to the fourth um, plus x to the second minus this. And if your n equals something with the third term, right, your p could be equal to r in that sense. r could be equal to p because that would be your remainder would be like an x to the fifth term. Or no, I'm sorry, x to the second term. Oh, wait, there's... Oh! That pop out somewhere? How does See, if there's the, the the basic thing is the basic thing is this, like if you have if you have P of X, right? If you have P of X plus Q of X, P of X, Q of X plus R of X like this, right? And suppose that the degree of R of X is larger than p. 
Yeah. Right. That means that this has things in it of the form like x to the, you know, um, x to the p and um, plus the constant x to the p um, plus 1, c, whatever, um, q, I want q, s, x to the p plus s, right? Times, let's say, you know, um, well, not times, but this plus lower, plus lower order terms, right? Plus g of x, where this has degree, um, degree of g of x is less than or equal to p minus 1. Right? Mm -hmm. So think, yeah. think, think about this here for a second. So if r of x is equal to this, in other words, it has a degree which is larger than p of x, so yeah. the degree of p of x is p, that means that there's p, p plus 1, all the other p plus s terms. Like these are higher order pieces. I usually write that first and then write that last, but yeah. sorry, I wrote it that way. All right? The thing is, if that's the case, <clears throat> then... Um, If I, suppose, if I suppose that this is x to the power of p plus stuff, right? Um, then I can like take this p of x, q of x, right? And I can subtract <laughs> p of x from that. Excuse me, subtract 1 from that. And if I do that, this will then get rid of that term. Mm -hmm. Which gets rid of an R. Okay. And it only gets rid of that term, and it messes with the G of X, right? Mm -hmm. But it just gets rid of that term, and it messes with G of X. Because this is P of X, which has degree P. And then I can do like minus C one X. Get rid of that. And that'll that'll get rid of this piece. And I guess I shouldn't start with that. I should really start with like start with this, you know, like minus C S X to the S, right? Mm -hmm. That can that get gets rid of this nasty bit up here. And then I should like redefine these things, and then you just keep doing this until you da 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 da, whatever. And you're left with plus g tilde of s, where this is the, the whatever this is that I have, you know, um, taken care of the consequences of this shifting to put them over the there. I mean, they equality. Mm -hmm. The point is. The point is, if this remainder is larger degree, you can take that larger degree piece and like shove it over into here mm. through a nasty bit of algebra, and in so doing, make this remainder piece smaller degree. But until it's less than p, until it's less than p. But you can't go like that's as far as you can go because, of course, you can't. Like, you can't get past constants with polynomials, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of stuck there. So, okay. I think that'll be my homework problem. Yeah. It's just... But I think this is, in fact, true. I, I think it's true. Now, the, the interesting question is, like, to what extent do we lose uniqueness because of zero? Like, how, what, what, what is the effect of zero divisors, actually? What's the general effect? Well, there, there's definitely an effect. <laughs> but... Um, I do think that this theorem is okay though, because like I'm, I'm relatively, 
appeased at the moment that the theorem is going to go through. We get factor theorem. We see we get division algorithm. Therefore, we get factor theorem. Therefore, we're able to factor out um, this. And then the thing is, once you can factor out this, so then you have factored out the um, factor at the level of z, then the course, whatever factorizations you find for the polynomial in z are also present for the polynomial in d, which is to say that you can factor d minus alpha l prime. Like the way l prime is defined mm -hmm. is in terms of whatever pops out here at the level of the polynomial algebra. And then level 5.3 Nathan has is something, something more. Uh, but uh, so anyway, um, long story short, um, next time we meet, we'll hopefully get a little bit further. But uh, you can kind of see where we're going. Mm -hmm. I think it's healthy for us to stop and try to really dig into this abstract algebra stuff here, though, because it's like foundational and it's just good for you and for me to go back to the basics and make sure we understand the nuts and bolts. You know? Yeah. Um, ultimately, theorem five point five here is like our sort of local, the next like peak of the summit, summit of the mountain that we're climbing to. Mm -hmm. Theorem five point five. And it says that you can, oh, it says if you can factor L as a product of repeated D minus alpha factors. Mm -hmm. And then here's the condition. This was surprising to me when I worked it out. But you need that the difference of the roots are units. All right. Yes. If the difference of the roots are units, yes. then the solution. A unit is what again? I'm sorry. I it's, it's fine. A unit is just means that it's not a zero divisor. Yeah. Oh. That's all. Really? So if the difference, if the difference of the roots, the alphas, are are are, are oh, units, okay. then the solution is like normal. This this equation is given here. That's the kind we talked about at the start with mm -hmm. our annihilator method. If it's not a unit? Yeah, if, if the difference of the roots are not zero divisors. And so if you look here on the next page, you say, well, what happens if they are zero divisors, right? Yeah. Well, um, let's see here. Algebraically, these equations are very interesting. They express a linear dependence among zero divisors. Yeah, let me see if I can find a good one, which... Um, okay, so example 5.8. Oh, yeah, I'll say, you know, I'll Actually, example 5.8, like, oh, like no puts a lot of things together. Um, so example 5.8, we have d minus 1 times d minus j acting on w equal to 0. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there you've got alpha 1 equal to 1, you have alpha 2 equal to j. So alpha 1 minus alpha 2 is 1 minus j. That's a 0 divisor in H2. So here is an example where we are not meeting the criteria of theorem 505. Sure and, in fact, if you look at the Ronskian, you get j minus 1, which goes to show you that e to the z and e to the jz are, um, you know, linearly dependent. The linear dependence is 1 minus j e to the z is 1 plus j e to the z, e to the jz, right there. And, um, so I saw, so like, of course, if you have, this will be the last thing we're going to do today. Um, well, I don't want to write that. <laughs> I need to think more. I'm going to try to write that up carefully. So, if I have, you know, d minus 1 times d minus j w equal to 0. So, what you can do is just go, um, Let's see here. Well, which one did I do first? Are you doing 5.8? Yeah, I'm trying to do 5.8. I'm trying to do first. Oh, 
oh yeah, I love this. So I let this be eta. See, so I have d minus 1, a equals to 0, right? So how do you solve that? Well, that's eta equals e to the z, right? Easy. So you mean you can easily check that. Derivative of e to the z, e to the z, e to the z minus e to the z, zero. Good. Yep. Good to go. So then what we're faced with is dw dz minus jw equal to e to the z. How do you solve that? Yeah. You know? How do you usually solve this sort of thing? Uh, looks like a thingy. Uh, the, 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 the differential equation. The, uh, right. It's it's a linear first order differential equation. It is. Yeah, it looks like a split. Yeah. It's um. Yeah, it looks like separation variables looks bad, but we can multiply by an integrating factor, right? Oh yeah. It looks so, like a thingy. So like integrating factor here should be e to the. We're supposed to do what i is integrating factor is exponential of the integral of p, which in this case is minus j d z. Right? So it looks like e to the minus j z is our integrating factor. So we get e to the you know minus j z dw d z minus j e to the minus j z w yeah. equal e to the z, right? Oh, and then let's say, yeah, you're missing, yeah. You can just minus J Z it. Right. Oh, yeah, exactly. good. Thank you. Very good. Nice. And of course, by the usual song and dance, that's D D Z of E to the minus J Z W. Oh, it says I put this matching. And you're like, oh right. Integrate. Now we got it. Just integrate both sides. Yeah. Divide by J Z. E J Z. Oh, divide by one minus J you say. It's a zero. Why is it? <laughs> you can't do that, that's right. So uh, yes, uh, this is great. This is, you know, lovely. Uh, e to the minus J Z W is in fact the integral of e to the one minus J Z D Z. But this integral is not something you can do. Oh, uh, that sucks. Uh, yeah, you can't do that. So what you got to do for this integral is use series methods, and that's what I do. I do that integration by. Oh, you do the dumb solution. I do. I. 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 I, um, I, I it's right there. Equation sixty-eight. See that? Uh huh. So what I did was I just used series methods to calculate the integral. Oh wait, this isn't the same thing as the stupid solution, right? No, no, no. Soup, that 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 only applies to differential. It'll do all this. All of this is irrelevant. The stupid solution wins in the end. Yeah. Oh, you're kidding. No, not at all. But anyway, um... Wait, you can solve integration with them, the stupid solution? I thought... Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, I guess I could, probably. Uh, oh, you didn't do that, though. That's not what you did. Maybe not. No, because... Integration's kind of a... is a, uh non-homogeneous differential equation. I mean, every every integration is essentially a non-homogeneous differential equation. You ever think about this? I'm integrating... Oh, well, y if you take it as your solution, yeah. y dx equal to zero. I'm looking for this equal to big Y, right? Yeah. And so basically what you want is big dy dx equal to little y. So it's, it's like, that's, that's the differential equation that you need to solve to solve the integral. It's not homogeneous because y is a given function of x in these problems. Yeah. So it's not quite the right pattern for the stupid solution. Stupid solution um, kills homogeneous problems with tangents. But um, so at equation 68, when I integrate that e to the one minus j z thing, mm -hmm. what I get is I get I get a constant and plus z plus some um, funny function, which includes a, involve, it involves a zero, but, so the funny function is complicated, it's a, uh, defined by a series, mm -hmm. which has zero divisor in it. The, like the series is built from, in equation 68, it's like one minus j's in the numerator, you see it? 
So what happens here when you solve what happens here when you solve this for w? You get w equals to c. Um, I think it was supposed to be a constant, c1 plus c2z. Oh, I guess I could just say c1 plus z, fine. You get um, Well, there should have been, I guess technically I should have a constant here, right? Can't you? Oh. Uh, Why don't you take the inverse of both sides? What happens if you do that? Let's still use zero. So I get C1 e to the JZ well, you might get zero. plus like, you know, Z e to the JZ, I yeah, can't, yeah. plus Funny function, either the Jay Z times funny function. Yeah. Anyway, if you let me just get to the point here. Uh, on page sixty nine, there I've collected everything together. That's the solution that we derive. We get W. C2 e to the JZ plus C1 e to the JZ, big parentheses, Z plus funny function. Okay. So if you just were solving, and this is all to solve what? This is to solve D minus 1 times d minus j, w equal to zero, right? So naively, you'd expect the solution is just like c1 e to the z plus c2 e to the jz, right? But what happens? We have e to the jz, and then we have z e to the jz. Wait a minute. That's a that's a thing. That's a, that means it was degree two, right? That's like the double solution. Yeah. Right? So when the roots differ by a zero divisor, it's as if they're the same root. But you get you get funny function. So the funny function, but the funny function also has a zero divisor dependence. So this is completely novel. This is something that's not seen over the reals or the complex numbers because there's no zero divisors, this phenomenon doesn't happen. And um, yeah, I'm sure that there's an alternate derivation that you could do which would make this look like c1 e to the z plus c2 e to the z times z plus other funny function. Like if you can write it in terms of e to the jz and z e to the jz, there's doubtless a way to like rip this and write it instead as e to the z and as z to the z term. So, What you cannot do though, is it is not true. You cannot write it as c1 e to the jz plus c2 e to the z as a general solution. The reason you can't do that is those functions are linearly dependent. So when you look at the Ronsky in here, you have e to the you know one plus j z. Um, oh, they're determining the zero. Then j minus j. one. Yeah, they're determining j. So um, you get the one and j minus one. So you get j minus one times e to the one plus jz. Yeah. This is your advisor. This is your advisor, yeah. And that actually simplifies just to one j minus one. Because like all the higher order terms in the exponential series have a j plus one, which cancels the j minus one. So like that infinite series in the exponential is down to the lowest term.